foot fall asleep every single time I film, I swear. <laughs> hey guys, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am talking about all of the books that I read in the months of August and September. I will go ahead and get started with August. So most of these books that I read took place during Enneagramathon, which was a two-week readathon that I helped host with a ton of other awesome booktubers. I did vlog this experience, but um, I had footage that just got lost. And then videos that were messed up for some reason and I tried editing certain things out it just it was not working with me I spent probably a full two weeks trying to edit that vlog and nothing was coming together so it got scratched unfortunately but I did read a ton of great books a ton I read four great books during that time the first book that I read during this readathon was The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides this book follows Theo he is a psychotherapist that hears about this woman Alicia who was this very famous painter and she shot her husband five times and then never spoke about it again Theo thinks that he has what it takes to get her to talk and so he starts working at the facility that she's at. This book switches back and forth between Theo working with Alicia to try to get her to talk about that night and then it also shows us glimpses into Alicia's diary that she kept before her husband's death. This book, oh my gosh. It was so good. I was not expecting to love it as much as I did. I never got bored. I was so invested in what was happening and what actually happened that night. The twist in this book, I still get so giddy and excited when I think about the twist that happened because I've never read anything like it. It was so crazy and just it, I, I wasn't able to predict it. But it wasn't one of those twists that seemed so unbelievable, like it came out of left field. It still felt so realistic, true to the story, but just the way that it was revealed to us was just amazing. I gave this book five stars. I love it. I would recommend it to anybody. It would be a great fall read too. So if you are looking for any, you know, mysterious kind of eerie books, I definitely recommend The Silent Patient. I was a little, I always get so worried about thrillers that are really hyped because I just think that I will set up the expectation so high to where the twist won't really, you know, surprise me or throw me off at all. But this one did. I'm so glad I gave into the hype. So definitely pick it up. It's so good. I have my stack of books here and I did not hold it up, but um, yeah, here was The Silent Patient. Next, I have Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. Another five star read for me in the month of August. I loved it. It was so good. This follows Tate and Miles. We get both of their point of view in this story. Tate moves in with her brother and the first day that she's trying to get into the apartment, she meets Miles, who is her brother's best friend. They find out that they have a mutual attraction as they get to know each other a little more, but Miles is completely emotionally unavailable, does not want to fall in love. And Tate thinks that's perfect. She doesn't really have time for love. She's a student, she's a nurse, she has a lot going on. And so they set up this little friends with benefits situation. However, of course, things are not that easy and some feelings are caught and some hearts get broken and it's just so good. I loved, loved this book. I really don't want to give too much away because this book is just fantastic and I think everyone should read it. But one thing I do want to say is that it does follow a pretty toxic relationship, which I mean, Miles' two rules in the book are don't ask me about my past and don't expect a future from me. So I mean, already that's not the most healthy thing that a guy can say to you. Personally, I did not find those aspects of the relationship romantic at all. I found it really sad and heartbreaking and I wanted to find out why Miles was like that, why he was so 
unavailable and why he was so hesitant to fall in love. And I felt for Tate in those moments where, you know, she also doesn't know what's going on because she can't ask. It's just, it's not very healthy, but I didn't find that romantic at all. It was when Colleen Hoover really gave us those glimpses of Miles' past and finding out what happened and the heartbreaking, just devastating things that he went through and how, you know, those are still affecting him to this day. How his past trauma is really affecting his ability to love and receive love and just, oh, I just thought it was so well done. I think you can really see him battle between him knowing what he wants now and his past keeping him from that and it's just oh it's heartbreaking it is so sad this book made me cry it just made me so emotional um Colleen Hoover did it again I absolutely love her writing it was just so good this was another one that I was so scared that the hype would completely throw it off for me but it didn't I loved it so good please pick this up it's amazing hello my lovely friends so picture this. I was editing this video and realized I decided to completely skip an entire book that I read. Anyway I read The Maidens by Alex Michelides which follows Mariana a woman who is trying to solve murders at a university after her niece Zoe's friend is found dead. Mariana believes she knows who is responsible, and just needs proof. I ended up giving this book 4 stars. I was interested in the story and it kept my interest, but I found the twist a little predictable. It didn't have the same wow factor that the silent patient had for me, but it was still a great read. I would highly recommend reading this in the fall. Okay, back to regularly scheduled programming. Next, I read Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon. This follows a girl named Evie who does not believe in love. Her parents are divorced and that really affected her. Her dad had cheated on her mom and is now marrying the woman that he had an affair with. And to top it all off, Evie randomly gets this power one day where she is able to see a couple's beginning and their end of their relationship whenever she sees them kiss. So if a couple is on the street and they kiss, she can see how the relationship started, glimpses into their relationship, and then how it will inevitably end. So she definitely doesn't believe in love even more because now any couple she sees, they're just no longer together. We are also following a little plot where she goes to this dance studio and unwillingly becomes dance partners with this guy named X. And I enjoyed this book. I ended up giving it 3.5 stars. It is YA, so I kind of try not to be as hard on my critiques with some YA books, but I just thought there was a lot going on in this book. None of the plots seemed incredibly developed. I just wanted a little more from the plot lines that we were given. I mean, we follow her family drama and we follow the dancing and we follow her relationship or the building up of the relationship with X. And we are following this dance competition that they are practicing for and X is in a band and they start writing songs together. I mean, it's just a lot and things just kind of happen. That's a big critique I have usually with YA is that nothing is incredibly developed or looked into. It's just usually kind of a bunch of little things that happen and I wanted to know more about stuff. I wanted a deeper look into things and I wished that you know, if the dance competition was the biggest part of the book, then leave the band stuff out. I don't know. I just, I kind of felt like there was a lot happening. And that made it really hard to get into the story because anytime I started feeling a little interested in something that was going on, it was kind of brushed over. And then all of a sudden, you know, instead of dancing, they're writing a song together. I did really like Evie as a character. I thought that she was a pretty realistic teenager. She was moody and a little grumpy and a little angsty and I mean who wasn't at that age so I did really like her and I also really liked the relationship development in the book. That was one thing that was not rushed. I thought that it really showed them becoming friends and you know developing those feelings. It wasn't this instant love. I cannot stand when books have insta-love so I thought that it was very well paced, 
just, I don't know, it was great for a YA and it did go a little deeper than I thought it would. There were some very deep moments and some sad moments that happened in the book, but yeah, I gave it a 3.5, which isn't bad, just not my favorite that I read that month. Next, I read The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I think I said that title right. I don't really even know how to describe this book. It was so weird. This follows a book club of women. They read true crime novels and they enjoy talking about their true crime interests. And then this guy moves to this southern community and children start going missing and so one of the women in the book club named Patricia starts looking into it and she thinks he is responsible for it and so she starts trying to solve these disappearances. I really enjoyed this book while I was reading it. It kept my interest. It was definitely unlike anything that I had read before but I don't really remember too much of it. I read it really quickly because it did keep my interest and now looking back at it a month or so later I don't remember a ton from it. There were some scenes that did stick out to me. One of those being a certain scene with rats. Yeah but it was a solid read. I wish I had spent a little more time with it so I could remember some more things but I think it would be a really good Halloween read. There are some gross scenes so if you're easily grossed out with you know just nasty things just keep that in mind i don't know if i said this i gave the southern book club sky to slaying vampires four stars so solid read wish i remembered more but it was good next i read it's a match by emma lord absolutely not the name and i could not tell you five things that i remember from this book i'll be honest apparently including the title so this book follows a girl at a summer camp who discovers she has a secret sister so very parent trap vibes happening the summer vibes in this book were also great but it was just nothing special i didn't really dislike it i mean i gave i ended up giving it three stars so it wasn't horrible it was just predictable and a typical YA book. It was feel good, nothing too deep, nothing too crazy happened. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it with that. If you're looking for a solid middle of the road summer read, which it's fall now, so you're probably not, but if you are next year, I think this would be a good one. I just, I don't think it was anything too spectacular. Next in September, my September was so busy. So I only read three books and those books were for my video where I read three of Haley's favorite thrillers before I went to Austin, Texas, where I got to meet her and spend the day with her. And so I really enjoyed all of the books I read. I read Pretty Girls, which I gave five stars. Behind Closed Doors, which I gave three, and then Dry Parts, which I gave another five stars. So they were all solid books. I'm not going to talk too much about them because I went really in depth in my reading vlog, which I will link down below. So check that out if you would like to hear all of my thoughts on those. I am so excited that it's finally fall. Excuse my air conditioning that decided to kick on right now, but I am participating in two readathons this. October. One of them I am helping host and the other one I'm just participating in for fun. So I will start with the one that I am helping host. So that is Spooktober, which I am hosting with some great booktubers, some of my best booktube friends. I'm so excited. It's been so fun so far. I have my little list here. Otherwise, I will not remember <laughs> every prompt and book that I decided to read for them. So the first one is Dark Academia, which I decided to read Redemption Prep by Samuel Miller. Our next prompt is a morally great character, and I'm finally reading The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I have had this book on my shelf for a while now, and I'm not a huge fantasy reader, but I think I'm in the mood for it this, this time. <laughs> I googled books with morally great characters and it was one of the first ones that came up so I took it as a sign. Next is Witchy Vibes and I am reading The X-Hex by Erin Sterling and apparently Erin Sterling is actually Paula Hawkins 
which is so cool. So even though I've never read a Paula Hawkins, I think it's cool when authors also write from other names. It just is always so intriguing to me. And so I'm very excited to get to that one. I have heard very good things, even though it just came out. I picked it as my book of the month. So I'm hoping to get to that one soon. Next, we are reading a book written by a BIPOC author or a book that has BIPOC representation. And I am going to read Little Secrets by Jennifer Hillier. I loved Jar Parts and I just really wanted to read more from her. And Little Secrets, I think, yeah, Little Secrets <laughs> was the one that was available on Libby. And so I just went ahead and downloaded it as quick as I could and so I'm excited to see what I think of her other stories. The next prompt is a Halloween read and I know this doesn't take place on Halloween but I'm picking Survive the Night by Riley Sager. Just looking at the cover with the headlights of the car and the dark night and the orange colors in the writing it just screams Halloween to me and I don't know if everybody gets that vibe from it but I am going to still pick it. It's going to count because this it just gives me Halloween vibes. I love it. Finally, our group book is In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. I recently just got this book. It came in. So I'm excited to finally read it. I'm hoping I can read it before our live stream, which is October 20th. So check out our Instagrams, the Discord, all of that good stuff to find out more information about that, to talk about the books that we're reading. It's been a good time so far and I'm excited to continue on with the October reads and hear what everybody else is reading. I normally only read about five to six books in a month, which Spooktober takes place throughout the full month and so I know that I can complete a book for each of those prompts. We are allowed to double up but I just decided to have a book for each prompt. But I'm also wanting to take part in the Sweater Weather Readathon, which is a readathon that is hosted by Zoe, Liv, and Abigail. And they are three of my favorite booktubers. I love watching their videos and their Instagrams are just so aesthetically pleasing. And I just really love them. So I wanna take part in this one as well orange on the cover. I decided to go with 56 Days by Katherine Ryan Howard. I picked this for my book of the month a little while ago and it's actually a book that takes place during COVID so I am excited to see how that goes. I haven't read a book like that yet. Next is a book that takes place during fall and I picked November 9 by Colleen Hoover. I had to have a little typical romance thrown in with these thriller books. Next is a book read in a format that you typically don't read and I'll probably do audio. I do enjoy audio. I just comprehend books better in a physical format or an ebook where I'm physically reading versus listening to it and so I haven't decided which one I will pick up on audio but it will probably be one of the books that I'm mentioning here since I do have quite a few books on my October TBR. Next is a book with a fall word in the title and this is another kind of lofty goal that I have here because I am reading The Cruel Prince and the second book is The Wicked King which wicked is a pretty spooky word. I think I'm going to go with that one but that would require me to really enjoy The Cruel Prince to read both in a month so we will really see that might change. It's just a TBR. I never stick to them anyway. And then next is a backlist which I am planning to read Layla by Colleen Hoover. So two Colleen Hoovers in one read of time. I also this month really want to finish up The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. I actually already finished it, spoiler, but I hadn't finished it by the end of September and so I wanted to finish it up in October. I also want to read Fortuna Sworn, I hope I'm saying that right, by KJ Sutton. This is the Fan Row book club pick which is a book club hosted by Sahar and like I said I don't read a ton of fantasy but I was so excited when she announced this because she is a fantasy queen. She has so many good recs so definitely check her channel out. Check out her book club. The live show is November 5th so if I don't finish this one up in no in October 
I can hopefully get to it within the first few days of November. Fingers crossed that I get this all done. Probably not. Probably will definitely read like five of these books, but <laughs> we have some lofty goals for this month. I'm excited. Fall is my favorite season. It's just so fun. I've had my fall coffee here the whole time. So I, yeah, I'm excited to get into the fall mood with these spooky fun reads. So if you are participating in any fall readathons or reading any fun fall books, definitely let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!